Hello everyone, I'm Willie Bloom, your Parts and Accessories Management course author. Sorry about being all wired for sound while I'm introducing myself, but the built-in system mic apparently just doesn't cut it for producing a quality audio recording. Obviously, since you're listening to this video clip, you have already figured out how to access the various course resources. I will in a moment add some explanation to what is there and why. I have said in the introductory announcement on Blackboard that parts operations management is both a complex and highly numbers intensive business. Since the automotive dealership management program is, let me call it, our flagship industry focused program, we wanted to be sure that it teaches each functional area with state of the art content. Doing that means that you are getting the full load of complexity that this entails with your course material. I appreciate that this program is targeted at industry leaders mainly interested in managing or understanding how to manage the total dealership operations. So you don't necessarily need to know the most intricate detail of advanced inventory management. But this does not change the fact that the course is also open to parts managers who will indeed be interested in all there is to know about best industry practice. This makes teaching this kind of complicated topic particularly challenging. To come to grips with a broad diversity of learning objectives, we have opted for that modified flipped classroom format that the announcement highlighted. Using this format, you are provided with a broad cross-section of learning tools and resources to help you progress at your own pace. I'll, we'll talk about those in a moment. More immediately, you will be required to complete some specific pre-course work to prepare you for rigorous discussion during the in-class session. Hopefully, your respective pre-course work will both bring those of you who are novices in the parts business and those of you with broad experience to something closer to a common base of understanding on which our in-class work can then build. This work, the submission of a draft copy of the Central Park Auto Sales case study posted in the Assignments folder of Blackboard, requires a general understanding of core parts business performance measures. The course syllabus identifies chapters 1 to 6 as the content to help you gain that general understanding. Well, frankly, there is a lot of stuff in these chapters. So let me perhaps ease the stress of being confronted right up front with all of this reading and studying. Chapters 1 and 2 are background information to help you appreciate the context. Chapter 1 is about how the dealership, or the OES sector as it is labeled, fits into the overall automotive aftermarket. Chapter 2 is basic principles, the five major areas or issues as we call them that parts inventory management needs to address and why. And chapter 6 draws all of the preceding chapters together into a comprehensive performance monitoring process. In other words, the core content that matters for you to do a respectable case study draft assignment is Chapter 3, Financial Analysis, what is measured there and where the required numbers are coming from, Chapter 4, Inventory Management, Key Performance Measures and why they are measured, and Chapter 5, Essential Inventory Management, DMS Reports and what they tell you. I hope this helps. Next, please bear with me as I make the talking head disappear to bring up some slides in support of an introductory discussion on the course structure. People have different learning styles. Unless you are a strong visual learner, it will, in my experience, tend to be difficult to absorb the more challenging material simply from reading text, however well presented. This is the reason I decided to provide also recorded video lectures as part of the flipped classroom format. Multimedia presentations are, I trust, more user-friendly to the auditory and kinesthetic learner. It's my sincere hope that this will enhance your learning experience, even though I expect that I will not be at risk to be nominated for an Academy Award by any of you for the work. <laughs> so be it. As you may have already explored, 
your textbook has eight chapters. The first two with background, the next three with the core material covering detailed financial and operational analysis, the next with a process of comprehensive monitoring. Chapter seven then is about building the capacity and organization to operate efficiently and effectively. And the final chapter deals with marketing and merchandising, competitive analysis, marketing strategies and tactics, and parts business development. The course objective is not necessarily to turn you into a parts management expert. The program objective, after all, is to help industry leaders to effectively control the retail operations, although the material is indeed there if you aspire to becoming that expert. There will be important content that you need to absorb to do well on the various elements of course evaluation, the quizzes, tests and assignments. But the intent is for you to be self-paced in terms of the intensity with which you will dig into the material. The learning priorities I'll get to with the next slide, so let me skip that for now. And the critical success factors are very much related to what I said a moment ago. We have people in attendance from a broad variety of educational and professional backgrounds. You need to assess upfront how intensive your studying effort needs to be for you to absorb the necessary knowledge and then guide yourself accordingly. The course syllabus, if you haven't already seen it, is posted to the course info folder. Please be sure to familiarize yourself with it. I'll talk about the course schedule and important deadlines in a moment. Now here are the learning outcomes. To us course facilitators, this is like a contract with you concerning what we will endeavor to help you learn. The course work scheduled is obviously then driven by the need to reinforce those learning outcomes. So here are the learning outcomes. Recognize the fixed operations critical success factors in building a sustainably profitable after sales service business. Second, evaluate the core issues affecting parts inventory and working capital management. And three, examine the principal parts department financial measures, guidelines and management reports essential to professional parts business management in Canada. And you'll learn that through both case studies and through various discussions. Four, develop and apply critical inventory performance measures to refining management system parameters and optimizing inventory investment. Then appraise the working environment conditions and best organizational practices conducive to optimal parts performance, overall parts department performance. And six, finally, formulate an effective parts and accessories marketing merchandising strategy that fully exploits potential business opportunities. Now, these are the cover pages of our textbook on the left and the format of posted PowerPoint slides on the right. For those of you learning more effectively with hard copy as opposed to screen, I am one of those, a hard copy of the text will be handed out in the classroom session. The eight video lectures, which are hosted on YouTube and accessible through the resources folder of Blackboard, tend to be anywhere between 50 minutes to an hour and a half in length. The posted PowerPoint slides, therefore, have two objectives. First, to give you a copy of what is used in the videos, where some of the busy data-intensive slides are not easy to keep up with. And second, to let you use the slides as a substitute for a video timeline or summary of contents, if you will, when you want to spool through to a specific point in the presentation without too much playing around with YouTube. Now here's the table at the end of the syllabus of important assignments. Quizzes, tests, projects and associated deadlines. Note specifically that by the end of the classroom session week you will have completed a case study draft, three quizzes and the first of two tests, work amounting to 37% of the total course grade weight. The quizzes and tests will be open book but they are time limited. So please don't count on being able to leave through your textbook at leisure to complete them. For future parts and accessories management courses, 
please look at the respective table at the end of that class cohort syllabus for the specific dates applicable to that session. I urge you to refer to the various assignment instructions in the assignments and discussion board folders to schedule your studying and learning accordingly. There will be ample opportunity to have discussions on the required work due later in class. Note the personalized parts department improvement plan topic. Let me abbreviate that to PP dip. It's a mouthful. Ultimately, once you have progressed to the growth and opportunity course, the last course in your program, various departmental or functional area projects are to be assembled into a comprehensive strategic and operational dealership development plan. The PPD project in this course, or parts thereof, will then be the parts and accessories component of this final project. Again, please look at the assignment instructions regarding what data would be required. Ideally, of course, the various projects would be about your dealership. Obviously, this is easier said than done if you don't work directly in a dealership. In other words, you need access to a source of data for the PPD project and presumably for other projects in other courses. So let me emphasize some things under this heading of planning ahead. Determine whether you have ready access to the financial and DMS reports for the PPDIP. Refer to the assignment instructions for what is needed. There's a list of typical statements and reports you are likely to need in the assignment instructions. Second point, if not working at a dealership, decide which real quote-unquote dealership data you plan to use you should have access to this data source throughout the program. Real here is in quotation marks for the following reason. The financial and operating data you would be asking a dealer to share with you is clearly confidential. If your data source dealer asks you to disguise the identity of his or her dealership, this will be okay in terms of meeting the course requirements. In any event, you can certainly be assured that there would be no confidentiality breach from my side, whatever the dealer's request. Now, the final point here, to be sure you will need to submit most of your coursework electronically. Be ready to be able to print or scan applicable assignments as PDF files or if there are alternatives, let me know for electronic submissions. I don't know whether this point is an issue with any of you, but we will have the opportunity to talk about deliverables in class. So enough about preliminaries. I'm looking forward to seeing you in class. Until then, happy studying and learning. And feel free to contact me if you have any questions. Good luck.